Cancer. The patient. I need a miracle. I had been diagnosed with stage 4 inoperable stomach cancer. I got second opinions, third opinions, fourth opinions, but they all agreed I had no more than three months to live. I didn't feel like it was my time. I was only 33 years old. I had so many things I still wanted to do. If there was a bright side, it was that I didn't have a wife or kids, and my loving parents died when I was in my early 20s, so there was nobody close to me that my passing would devastate. I begged the doctors to give me some hope. I insisted that there must be some kind of treatment that might cure me. Some of the doctors said they could try aggressive chemo and radiation therapy. Others said that would be akin to torturing myself and encouraged me to simply enjoy the remainder of my life while I could. I didn't want to waste my time with treatments that would bring me nothing but misery, but I also wasn't willing to go down without a fight. I was desperate and began looking into every conceivable option possible. I found myself in the office of a holistic doctor. He told me the best he could do for me was give me something for the pain. I told him I was only interested in being cured. The doctor paused for a long while as if contemplating something. At this stage of my life, every second counted. What? What is it? The holistic doctor continued to hesitate but finally came forth with his thoughts. I know someone. He's not a doctor. He's a scientist. His grandmother died from cancer. His mother died from cancer. His wife died from cancer. Now cancer is his obsession. He dedicates every waking second of his life to finding a cure. His problem is that he needs people to experiment on. For the first time since I had been diagnosed with cancer, I felt a surge of hope rush through my veins. You're saying he needs a human guinea pig? The holistic doctor shrugged. Yes, I suppose that's what I'm saying. I'm in. The location I was given was an old abandoned clinic. The sidewalk was overrun by weeds. The mundane exterior of the three-story building was weathered and cracked. After wrapping my knuckles on the mildew-stained glass door, it was the scientist himself who answered. He was a short, balding man wearing an unbuttoned dress shirt, a sloppy necktie, and a stained lab coat. His gray eyebrows were bushy and the creases on his forehead were prominent. His resting face held that of a subtle scowl. When I told him I needed a miracle, the man affixed his cold, icy blue eyes on me. He showed no signs of emotion as he spoke. Every second you're alive is a miracle. My goal is to provide you with more of those precious seconds. But let me be perfectly clear. I want to experiment on you. I can guarantee you nothing in the way of results. Can you guarantee me that you'll try your best to cure me? I thought I sensed a subtle smirk from the scientist. Yes, I can guarantee you that. Then we have a deal. I spent a couple hours signing all kinds of forms that made it clear that I was agreeing to these experiments willingly. It would likely keep the scientist out of jail if these secret experiments ever got out to the public. The scientist wasted no time. He set me up in a small hospital room which was much cleanlier than the rest of the building's innards. I was set up to an IV immediately and he rattled off the list of ingredients that were mixed in the bag that was dripping into my veins. Some of it sounded like medicine and some sounded like fruit. The only thing that sounded familiar to me was avocado extract. The scientists explained that the mixture would likely cause side effects. Due to the lack of human subjects, he wasn't positive what I would experience, but said the common side effects would be varying degrees of anxiety, 
nervousness, fear, and panic. Twelve hours later, those side effects were in full swing. I wasn't sure what I was so nervous and anxious about, but the fact that the scientist was coming into the room nearly every hour certainly contributed to it. He kept fidgeting with the IV bag and would periodically add a syringe full of liquid to it. He didn't speak much. I mean, would it kill him to ask me how I felt once in a while? Every few hours, he would take blood from my veins. Why did he need so much? What was he doing? I was sure that I'd feel better about the procedure if he would keep me updated, but the man was practically mute. There was also something scary about him. I couldn't quite place my finger on it, but there was something worth fearing with him. That much I knew. The following day I was surprised when the scientist opened his mouth and graced me with his voice. How much pain were you in when you arrived yesterday? Constant pain, but nothing I can't handle. It feels like a mild cramp in my stomach. And what about now? How much pain are you in now? I was shocked. I hadn't even realized that the pain in my stomach had vanished. Well, it... it's... gone. What does that mean? Nothing yet, but it's a step in the right direction. With your permission, I'd like to up the dosage of this medicine to a much higher level. A level I have never administered to anyone before. Well, do whatever you need to do. It was less than an hour when the scientist upped the dose to a much more potent level. The effects were strange. I felt numb and tingly before I passed out. I dreamt of the scientist hovering over me with surgical instruments in his hands. I could feel the pressure of him slicing through my flesh and removing my internal organs. I woke up in a cold sweat. My stomach was aching. I reached down and could feel a long line of stitches running along my stomach and my lower back. It wasn't a dream I was having. It was a memory. He was taking my organs. This son of a bitch wasn't a scientist. It was all a ruse to sedate me and steal my organs so he could sell them on the black market. I ripped the IV out of my arm, leapt from the bed, and exited my room. I raced up and down the hallway searching for the mad scientist who did this to me. He would pay for this. He would pay dearly. I saw a room at the end of the hall with light emitting from underneath the door. I hurried to the door and kicked it open. And there he was, the mad scientist. He was sitting at a messy desk amongst towers of cluttered papers. There was a computer monitor in front of him illuminating his evil face. He scowled at me and I swear his expression didn't change one single bit when I shouted at him. You took my internal organs! As I rushed toward him, he turned and reached out for something near his keyboard. A gun, no doubt. He had my organs, and there was no reason for him to keep me alive any longer. He was going to shoot me dead, so I had no choice but to defend myself. I strangled him to death with his own necktie, and then I burned his entire clinic to the ground. Cancer... The Scientist Cancer is a monster. I am the Slayer. Since my wife's demise, I have dedicated my entire life to finding a way to rid the monstrosity from the face of the Earth. I felt like I was as close as I could get without working with human subjects, experimenting on them. I put out word with every doctor that I trusted to let any terminally ill cancer patients know about me. With each patient I could experiment on, the closer I could get to conquering the beast. The experimental patients were few and far between, but I made great strides with each one. When the 33-year-old man with stomach cancer arrived at my clinic, I was confident he would be the breakthrough patient, and I was correct. 
The first administration of the medicine I concocted had staggering results. According to the blood results, his cancer had diminished significantly. The patient agreed to allow me to increase the dosage to levels I had never used before. From there, it was just a matter of waiting and observing. My magic potion, as I like to call it, consists of a perfect balance of various medicines, both pharmaceutical and herbal holistic, along with extracts from numerous fruits and vegetables. Some of the extract is used in psychedelics and can have extreme side effects. The patient passed out quickly once the heavy dose was administered. This was good because I wasn't sure how extreme the side effects would be. The psychedelic effects coupled with common anxiety and fear side effects could result in dangerous behavior. After I finished checking his latest blood results, I decided I would put restraints on the patient just to be on the safe side. That plan, along with everything else in my mind, was pushed aside when I saw the results. The blood test showed no indication of cancer in the patient. None. I had done it. I had found the cure for cancer. I'm what the kids may refer to as old school. I write all my notes down by hand. I was trembling with excitement as I transferred the handwritten notes to a computer document that I could save. I had just typed the last line of the document and was about to press the save button on the keyboard that would automatically send the formula of the magic potion to several colleagues along with it automatically uploading to a secure cloud server to ensure its existence, when the door to my office burst open and the patient lashed out at me. You took my internal organs! The patient was hallucinating badly and had become violent. This side effect likely wouldn't last longer than four hours, but that did me no good in the current situation. As the mad patient rushed me, I turned and reached out to press the send button on the keyboard, but the patient reached me before I could do so. We struggled for a moment before he wrapped my own tie around my neck and began squeezing the life from me. It was clear to me that I was going to expire before I could save the cancer-curing formula, but I died feeling content knowing that one of my colleagues would find the formula on my computer and the cure for cancer would be known. That is, as long as the patient didn't do anything crazy like burn the entire clinic to the ground. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. I'll be back soon with another scary story.